Jesus is the church. Jesus is the rock. The cornerstone of the church is Jesus. We are all brothers and sisters in Christ the Lord. Give them a hand, amen. So in Sunday school, we've been learning about the body of Christ. Jesus is the head of the church. The church is the body. God is our Father. The church is our spiritual family. Amen. What is the body of Christ? The body of Christ is the church. Jesus is the church. Jesus gives hope. Jesus is the head. Jesus created us. He loves us. The church is the home. He is always with us.
God and who He is. You know, for me, the foundation and the knowledge of the Word is very important because what is eternal life? Yes. What is eternal life? Eternal life is to know God and Jesus Christ whom He has sent. Heaven and earth will pass away. Everything you see here right there will be gone. You know, say 200 years time because people are living very long these days. But His Word will remain forever. Amen? Amen. Amen. So for me, the Word of God saved my life. It saved my soul. I wouldn't have been standing here today. And that's why as a church, we lay a foundation through teaching. And for me, like... Really, foundation is very important because if you build a house on sand, it's not going to last. But if you build the house on the rock, Jesus, you will remain. The devil can't move you because you are firm and solid on the rock, Jesus, the Word of God. And that's why I love the Word of God. It transformed my life. And I believe every church should have a teaching ministry because... You have believers, but somebody that teaches or learns the word, studies the word, that person becomes a disciple, not just a hearer of the word, but a doer of the word. Amen? Amen. And I can see that the 14 weeks of foundation, disciples, I call them disciples, they had a 14 week of teaching where we determined their diet for them for 14 weeks, you know. And many, some of them fall out for their own reasons, but we have ten of them that persevere and give the Lord a hand of praise. Amen. Amen. And you know, yet now we don't see male or female, but this time it's more males than females Woo. give the Lord a hand of praise. So thank God for them for, you know, coming through 14 weeks diligently attending Sunday morning's class. And we could see how the word was starting transforming them. We could see how the brightness, how it's coming to them. We could see, but now they must continue in the word. Amen? Amen. They must continue in the word and the fear of God. Amen. We want to see them actively committed in church because that is where you find your purpose. Amen? Amen. If you are committed, you will find your purpose. Pastor always says, a disciple must be available, faithful, and teachable. Amen. Amen. <laughs> faithful, available, and teachable. That is a mark of a disciple. And also a doer of the word. Amen. So we're going to call them up now, one by one, and they're going to share a short testimony. Oh, they go, but over the minutes it doesn't matter. Hey, I just gave them three minutes because some of them are evangelists already. <laughs> you let them loose, they're going to preach. So we give it them a bit more if they want to add more, but not the whole sermon. Amen. Amen. Now to pull up, this is our lectures. Give a hand to the lectures. Um, when your name is called, you can come up onto the stage from this side, Amen. and then you can uh, shake past his hand and take your certificate, um, and then stand for a picture with Pastor and Pastor Patty, and then you can share your testimony, and then after that, if you can just line up in front of the stage, so on the floor, but in front of the stage, and if you can just wait there, because we'll take a group photo right at the end. Amen. 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 To the left hand side. To the left hand side of the stage. Amen. Amen. So the first disciple I'll call up is Mansoor Adams.
And the closer you get, the more, what do you say? Yeah. So, I never used to be fond of prayer, going to church. Then, when I came to this church, everything changed. And I started the classes. And then, started praying more and more. about six years at this church and um, I start believing in God and I and I see the, 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 the work that happened, I see um, the people that passed the prayed for, the miracle that happened in their lives and um, for me it was um, I start um, getting that relationship again with the, with the God and um, to me I just, um, I didn't so like to everybody um, I was doing it, it was like always still nice, always like in my darkness, I'm still with it and like then people say, um, I know I'm mean, of God, I know this, um, because um, I'm just in my world with the men, with the men, um, with the God and um, but I think that's also a thing that I need to change and um, just to show everyone that um, the light on me, it can be shine out there and you know, to be a, a, a man of God, you know. And uh, for this um, 14 weeks, you know, I'm so grateful that, that I, this is my second one, the first time I did, I went to classes, but I didn't finish it, but thanks to God, um, I finish it now. <laughs> and, um, for the 14, for the 14 um, weeks, and um, you know, um, I also uh, struggle also um, see what the Bible. If you open the Bible, you are reading it. See, it's almost like the devil just want to play with your mind. And, no man, put it out down or do this or you see it. Um, see, this also now in the in the foundation class, I learn everything. There was so a lot to learn, you know. Um, you know, I, I, even if I take the Bible now, if someone gives me a script, then I know we, then I know where to go. If I say go to look there, verse twelve, so then I know where to go now. But before that, I never, never know that the, the, the verses or the, the, the scripts in the Bible. But now I can do it. Now um, I'm just glad that I finished this and I'm just grateful for Pastor Petty and Pastor Wee that is always there. Even, um, you know, sometimes the, the, um, the devil can show up and um, see then 
Pani Pazini vot te 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 no, um, um, life is, re- is really a challenging thing if you, if you, if you, if you not, if you out there in the world, but you in in church every Sunday and you do what you must do, and then you will, you will be um, a sexual man, in the name of God. Amen. 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 over this 14 weeks is um, I love gospel music I can't live without it and I love being in the presence of God and I really don't like not being in the presence of God um, I want to say thank you to Pastor Louis and Pastor Patty for their prayers and guidance I want to say thank you to my mommy and my daddy for their prayers and leading me through this thank you to thank you to Sister Natalie and Brother Marcelo for the teaching and thank you to everyone in the church for their prayers God bless Church. So, so 
um, in this 14 weeks, um, I've learned a lot. I've learned to become more wiser. Like, and before the foundation class, um, I was the same, like to spread the word to, like, to my friends and to speak about Jesus. But now um, I can speak to God and, and yeah. Hey, hey. Amen. Our next disciple is Chantal Jacobs. Okay, I greet everyone in the name of Jesus. Um, before foundation class. Um, I was a little bit um, not, not at peace during night. I was a, I was a very worried um, person, but worried about everything. And um, during the foundation class, the Lord revealed to me that He is God. He is the provider. He is everything that we need. And um, 14 weeks went, went by, and at night I couldn't sleep, but I'm not so, I'm now so peaceful. At night, at work, I'm so peaceful. It's like it's like everything just can go by. Whatever the manager say, you can just say what you want. But I got the Lord by me, and I got Jesus by me. And I want to encourage you with this verse. It's John 14 verse 27. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world gives do I give you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let be afraid. Let me tell you people, those who don't know the Lord, the world can give you nothing. The world can give you peace, but if you come to God and you surrender everything to Him, He will give you a peaceful mind, a peaceful heart, a loving, caring heart. So make your way. Uh, there's a, scale, a, a verse that says, um, Come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, I will give you rest. Amen. So I will encourage you with those words. And the word is not just a word, it's a promise that you made. I say, I say to the people, it's the biggest prophecy that you will get the word. Amen. 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 Our next disciple is Damien Jacobs. That is a real miracle. Hard man. Gangster. Running around with guns or whatever, but I want to tell you something as he dropped his back. But thank God for his wife. Amen. Birthing the word into us into his spirit. And he will drop it to church and he will wait for her. But he will tell him what he said. What did you speak over you? Do you even know what he spoke over you? <laughs> Greetings, sirs. I greet you in the name of the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I know that's so you know. Um I would just drop my wife at church and as I come pick her up, I'm always a bit earlier than the world is old. Paz is always the busy preaching. And I can hear him as I'm sitting in the bucky, preaching, and I always tell myself, I'm going to put my foot one day in this church. My life is never ever going to be the same. <laughs> Without me knowing it, it, it came to pass. And I thank God for the seed was being planted many, many moons and stars before me even knowing it. It was planted through through those who always kept me in prayer and then the battles that I faced. Um, I thank them all. I even thank Pastor and Pastor Louis and Pastor Patty for being a uh, part of my life. I thank God for allowing me to come to this church. And I just want to say a short testimony of Foundation Clause. Since I started Foundation Clause, change change um, automatically started in, my, in all areas of my life, especially in my thinking towards God and who God is and what God stands for. So I thank God for His Word.
for my life will never ever be the same again. And change has to come in Jesus' name. Amen. Our next disciple is Grant Martins. I just want him to share that little testimony. What a testimony, what a powerful testimony. Drank whiskey every day. I want him to share what happened. He was afraid of me. <laughs> Good morning, church. Um, so, I just wanted to say something. Um, yeah, it's been 14 weeks, it's been, it has been really, really tough. And obviously it comes with the challenges, you don't want to get up in the morning, you're too tired, all this and that. But the one thing I learned most was to humble myself, man. God is so powerful and He makes the impossible possible for us. If you give your all to God, He just takes away everything and He provides you with everything. If you open up your heart, your mind completely to God, He gives you everything. From drugs, from losing my whole career in rugby, back injury, couldn't walk, drinking each and every night of my life, I threw it almost away. But only one person could help me, and that was God. Amen. And I just wanted to give all the praise and all the glory and all the honor to God. He is so powerful, so there's no other way. It's only God. God is the only way. Amen. So thank you so much, Church, Pastor Patty, Pastor Louis, and the disciples um, I've got to know in the 14 weeks. Thank you so much, guys, and yeah, thank you so much. Amen. 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 Our next disciple is Gabriel Onoya. Lady had had it in the legs, she went to Hulitzke, you know that woman. And she went to her toilet. 
both legs, but like both legs, and that lady brought her that she had a headdress, and one of her friends brought her there, and I prayed for her, and the pain left her, and she said, I'm not going in. The pain left me. And uh, I wanted my legs off because I couldn't bear the pain. That's why I pulled all my hair out, she showed me. And he reminded me of her. And then Monique, and I just told her, I told them, put the oil on, but you must drink it too. And he came here and I put the oil on and he went, it was a scare. Then what happened? So, I put the oil on, on my face, the Wednesday morning, on my way to work. Um, then I was sitting with Monique outside and Monique said to me, um, she just remember now there was also a lady that also put on the oil and then the lady drank the oil and she became better. So why don't I drink the oil? So I said, okay, I'm going to try it. I'm going to try it. I drank the oil the Wednesday night. But funny enough, I didn't tell Pastor that my nick told me I must drink the oil. <laughs> and Pastor told me, but why don't you drink the oil the Wednesday night? So I told Pastor, but my nick said the same thing the Wednesday afternoon. So I drink the oil. <laughs> and then church, the Thursday morning, I wake up with my wife every morning, quarter to five. Because I must drop her at the, at the fire station for a lift. So, when I got out of bed, something said to me, go to the mirror and look. Because every morning I would get up. When I get up, I look in the mirror, I just see blood. It, 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 the blood was so thick sometimes, it dries on, on top of the crust. And it takes me almost an hour to, to clean my face. And that morning, that Thursday morning, when I looked in the mirror, I didn't use the, the, the gauze. I used my hand, I just pulled that crust so off. And, it, and the skin underneath was clean. Oh, and all that was there was gone. And I, I messaged Pastor Petty the same morning. I took a picture and I, and I sent it to Pastor. Said, Pastor, look here, it's gone. I messaged Alistair this morning saying it's gone. Church, it's been a year that I've been lupus free. Amen. 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 The medicine was for one tablet. Um, the doctor said that for one tablet per month was 16,000. Just one tablet. And I told Alistair, one tablet, 16,000 rand. Alistair told Pastor, and Pastor prayed. Kurotsky gave me tablets to drink, it's still in home. Kurotsky gave me ointment to put on, it's still in home. I didn't use it once, I only yeah. used the, the oil that passed the prayer for. I actually want to say thank you to Alistair Monique for bringing me here to this church. Church, if it wasn't for Alistair Monique, I wouldn't have been standing here today with a certificate in my hand. They, they bribe us with sweets. <laughs> Every class they would give us sweets if we get up. If you remember our memory verse, no one was But thank you for our teachers for guiding us for this part. Pastor Louis, Pastor Betty, thank you for being in my life, in my family's life. Really, it was, church, it was through Alice and Monique that I can stand in the middle of two pastors. I was at the church and I told Alistair, mm -mm, need I care again? <laughs> need I care again? I care, I mean it's about my blood work. <laughs> I told my wife this morning when we drove past the church, I said to my wife, uh-uh, need I care again? <laughs> Clap. But thank you pastors Amen. for being in my life. Pastor Louis, sorry for phoning you at 2 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> but it's worth my I'm lupus free. I and I didn't even tell the first year that
there and no persuade. Funny enough, whenever I go back to for my test results, the last time when I went back for my test results, the doctor actually chased me out of hospital out of the hospital. Oh. Yes. <laughs> he said to me, Get out of here! I'm taking space. <laughs> so if it wasn't for Pastor Louis, Pastor Penty, I don't think I would have been here today. But it's been a year that I'm lupus free. Thank you, Pastor. the Lord this afternoon. This church was established because of the presence of the Lord. Amen. And it's 26 years ago, um, my family and I, we had an encounter with God, an encounter with heaven. We didn't go and study at the time to become pastors or anything like that wasn't in our mind. Yes, we served the Lord, but we were not surrendered to God. There's a difference. Is he your Savior or is he your Lord? And we had in March 1997, if you count back, it's 26 years of ministry. We had an encounter with the Lord. 
We had an encounter with heaven in our car. We had an encounter with heaven. But wherever the glory of the Lord manifests to deliver, to heal, to change, the word must proceed. Amen. Amen. It can't just happen out of the blue. And just before then, I went to a, like, it was in a home, and somebody read Romans 8. And Romans 8 struck me like, it, it, it hit me in my belly because I was depressed. I was, I wanted to be out of this world because sometimes you want answers and you can't find answers. Am I right? Amen. As then you just have to wait upon the Lord. And I was a person I wanted now. Whatever I want, I wanted now because I used to get what I wanted. <laughs> and you know, <laughs> And you know, sometimes we go through these things in life where there's no answer, no doctor can give you an answer or certainty. No person can give you an answer. Not your money can help you. Not your parents can help you. Not your husband can help you. Nobody can help you. And that's when I went into a very deep depression. And it's in a home where I heard the word, nothing will separate you from God's love. No height, no depth, no power, no principality, no any power, no angels will be able to separate you from God's love. And when I heard that word, nothing happened at the time, but I received it in my spirit, not in my mind. When we got into the car, I just felt the warmth in my belly. And then I started <coughs> vomiting. I didn't know what was happening. I was being delivered from unbelief. I had so much unbelief. I didn't trust God no more. Because what was happening in my life? I started to see the problem all over. The situation I think you people can identify with. It. When it seems that everywhere you look, there is it. Nothing is bigger. But our God is bigger than any problem. Amen? Amen. Why can I say so? Because he died and he rose again. He's the God of the impossible. And he's at the end of the age waiting for us. We walk by faith and not by sight. And it's there where my husband, we were in the car driving home. And I was vomiting. My husband started vomiting. My, eld, my daughter, that's the eldest one, two years old, started vomiting. Shoo! Across the seats, we were all a mess when we got home. We had an encounter with heaven. He took out all the mess out of our lives. Doing things in our own strength. Wanting to do it our way. His thoughts is higher than our thoughts. It was just about me and my family. But when I had an encounter with God, first thing he taught me, don't just be a hearer of the word, but a doer. Many people hear the word, but they don't do the word. They forget about it when they are in situations. He told me, do not just be a forgetful uh, hearer, but be a doer of the word. Then he says, you will be successful. Amen? Amen? That's why I love the word. And then the other scripture gave me, that was Holy Spirit giving it to me. Do not trust in the arm of flesh. Do not trust in man. Man is going to fail you. But trust in God and you will be like a tree planted by the waters. No matter if the heat comes or whatever comes your way, you will remain ever green. So those two things the Holy Spirit planted in my heart. And since that time, I started just doing the word. Simple. Just doing the word. I had an encounter with heaven an encounter with love. And you know, his love calmed all my fears and it dried up all my tears. Isn't that awesome? I was, I didn't want to see daylight no more. After that encounter with God, after his, he poured his love into my heart and I received it, it wasn't just in the mind but in the spirit. Wow, every, I always say a grass blade is the most beautiful thing. Everything became beautiful in my eyes. Why? Because the Spirit of the Lord is within me. 
And till today, I feel him no matter what I go through in life, because we live in a sinful world, I have that peace that passes all understanding, and the joy of the Lord is my strength. Amen. 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 So it's 26 years of ministry, actually, but when I counted back, just on Monday, the Lord guided us to have like a, a, a month of kingdom. Am I right? Amen. And we started studying what is the kingdom of God all about. And we, we are in an unshakable kingdom. Amen? We are not shaken because in this world system, we will disappoint. We will be disappointed because people will fail you. But God will never fail you. Is yesterday, today, forever the same. And you know what? After that day, we started just doing the works of the Lord. We opened our house to, to everyone that wanted to hear the good news. The kingdom of God. So we opened our house. I don't know how many people is from the house. Let me see. That came to the house. Amen. In the house. Amen. We were in the house and we had powerful times and our neighbors all came into our homes and they became leaders into our church. The neighbors had encounters with the Lord. They came into our home. I think Vanessa got saved on Valentine's Day and she's still in the house of the Lord. Amen? And it, it had a ripple effect right down the road and then in the community, like the Lord says, then in our city and then in the nation and then international. Amen. Isn't that, that is a promise to you and me and to everyone. We didn't work it out, now we're going to go travel, now we're going to do this. Now everything God orchestrated because his ways is higher than our ways and his thoughts is higher than our thoughts. So we just surrender to him and we start doing the word and the Lord guided from there till we are here now. Amen. Give the Lord a hand of praise. It's all about Jesus. Give him your soul. Give him your everything. Love the Lord with all your heart, your mind, and your soul. And with everything that is in you. And so we had an encounter with the Lord. And so the church, uh, actually our ministry started. Jesus Christ, in Revelations 19, verse 16, it says, He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And this kingdom, all the kingdoms of this world, will become the kingdoms of our Lord one day. But right now, where is the kingdom? Where is the kingdom? Within us. The kingdom of God is within us. And you know, Revival Power Ministries International is all about the presence of God. We do not just hunt down miracles. It is where the presence of the Lord is, their miracles naturally happen. Amen? Because the Holy Spirit does the miracles. Don't hunt down or run to this crusade and that crusade for miracles. See the presence of the Lord and miracles will happen through you. You will have a PhD to preach to you and deliver. That's why I have a PhD. Amen? Everyone can have a PhD. We are all called to preach the gospel, to heal and to deliver. I was delivered. Amen? So, when Jesus came to earth, he proclaimed the gospel of the kingdom. And he cured or he healed every disease amongst the people. No disease is too big for God. He healed all diseases. And we've seen all diseases being healed. I must say and thank my husband. He's the visionary of the ministry. He is the visionary. We thank God for him that God called him into full-time ministry many years ago. And, you know, when he said the Lord called me, I couldn't say anything. I just said, yes, if the Lord called you, I will support you in any way. Amen? Amen. And when the Lord called him, I could see the love of God in him. 
we would go into any, no matter if the person have TB or MDR TB or whatever the situation was, or, or skin diseases, he would touch them. Because he didn't do it for himself, he had the compassion and the love of God to flow through him to bring healing. Amen? Amen. And he meditated the word. Without the word, we can do nothing. Too much word is not, you can have too much word, but then you can be dead. You know, it's just the, the, the logos, but not the rhema of the word to activate you, you know. And so, you know, in the Revival Power Ministries, it's all about the presence of the Lord. Do you experience the presence of the Lord? Amen. And a touch of heaven every service. I love Revival Power Ministries because here I get delivered and set free as well. Every week, I experience the power of the Lord. And I love being amongst the family of God. Amen? Amen. It's so blessed to be together. That's why the Lord he instituted marriage and He instituted the church. Because alone we cannot do it in this day and age. We are the bride of Christ. We need to ignite one another. And we need to run with the word and the fire of God. Amen? Amen. So, yes. So if I'm going to ask Sister Nikki, how are you, Sister Nikki? It is well with my soul. Amen. And if I ask, how are you, Sister Cody? Yes. I'm blessed. This is the culture in this church. They said, what is wrong with these people? They never complain. The ears say, as well with my soul, the audience say, I'm blessed. Why? Because we created a culture in this church. The culture is we speak God's blessings upon ourselves and we will walk in that blessings Amen. and we are walking in that blessings. Amen? Amen. In the Lord and of praise. Amen. So the power ministry, the Bible speaks about the revolution, the revival power ministries. It speaks about a change that took place in your, in your spirit, in your heart and that change came about through the presence and the power of God that brought an encounter with him. Amen? Amen? So in this church we believe of having encounters with the Lord. And you know in the old church and in the house, they used to run with bowls because the people were vomiting and being delivered. Our ministry is not, some people can't understand the ministry because people if they want to vomit now, it's like all the unbelief coming out we never orchestrated it. This is what happens when we pray. Things must happen. The kingdom must manifest. It will take out what's not of God. All unbelief will come out. Amen? Amen. And then later pastor said, Oh my carpets, please. <laughs> burn it out. Burn it out. He used to say, burn it out in the stomach. You know? Whatever wanted to come out. And I remember in our house, Louis used to at night when we had service, used to wipe out the bathroom. Sometimes there were blood in there, all types of things. And he would clean it when the people left. And thank God, from that time <laughs> till now, God has protected us against sickness and disease. Isn't God great? Amen. If that is your calling, you are not afraid of it. We went right through COVID. People came into our church. We were just there for them. Isn't God great? Amen. Thank God for the leaders of our church. Thank God for everyone that came through our, our door of our home. The other church, this this church here. We thank God for each and every uh, you know soul that is sent in. With the Lord sharing, there's a delay. Amen. But this is a day that the Lord has made. This is very powerful. I want my son Brett just to share with you what happened to him. You know, he was at the church and I never saw him for 10 years. 10 years he disappeared. But you know, he promised the Lord something. He said, Lord, if you deliver me from this scar laying on me, I will serve you for the rest of my life. As an auto electrician, they couldn't, the car, there was something wrong with the car. And he said, it's in the tank. I've got to take off the tank. And he took it off. And he drained the petrol and put it there. And so, you know, I tell you, the Lord will you. It burnt up all the cars around. But I want him to come up and share with you. And the pain that he had. 
and that's the way we contact. What happened, my son? Hallelujah. Good morning, church. Afternoon. God is so faithful. Amen. We serve a miracle working God. Amen. You know, um, here's my mother and uh, also my auntie. She also came today here. Uh, and we thank God for, you know. And uh, yeah, that's how I came to be at this church was um, I, I suffered a severe burn to the side of my body. And uh, it was so intense, you know, that we could see the insides from the, from the burn. And um, that time, somebody had told my mother, you know, about Pastor Louis and the church. And um, there was no hope. So they loaded me in the, in the back of the car and the seats were flat. And uh, I had pajamas on. Amen. Yeah, I, was, I remember Pastor Tony was always in the back of the church. And he helped us to carry me in, laying in the back of the church. And I never knew the Lord. You know, I never had a relationship with Him. You know, I didn't know about His power, His healing power. You know, and that, he, and that in the Lord, God can set you free from whatever it is that you're facing. You know, and... Um, so I never had an encounter before with, with the Lord, you know. I never experienced that healing power, that power that come over you. And uh, there I was laying in the back of the church. And um, I had this cause over me because I, I ran away from the hospital. Oh, yeah. So what happened there when you were busy with the car? So, you know, when the car, when, the, when it got ignited, you know, the, the jack came down. Oh. And, and I was underneath. And there was nobody. There was no one around. To take me out. And God gave me that supernatural power. You know, as a young boy. That's why it's worth saying, you know, even young men will grow weary. But God will give you strength. He will give you strength. You know, and... The Lord allowed me to come out. And I remember even my mother-in-law, she was there that time when that happened. I went to her house and the burn was severe. She didn't also know what to do. She took the hair dryer and tried to blow me with the hair dryer. <laughs> because she couldn't <laughs> And you know, and when I came at the hospital, they put me in a room with people that were dying. I remember the lights were off because they don't want, you know, when about the state hospital, they don't want one man to see another man dying. And I said to them, what, I'm not going to die. You know, and I remember, this was three o'clock in the morning, and I think that's why the Lord always arrests me at 3 o'clock. And you know, the Lord allowed me to open my eyes. 3 o'clock in the morning. And I saw a man next to me die. And they took him out of the room. And they brought another man in. And he had a knife in his hand. And I said, I'm not going to die. And I remember 6 o'clock, they said the doctor will come here 7 o'clock, but I knew the doctor was going to bring me bad news. And I got up and I walked, I left the hospital. And I remember my mother coming and they got me that side there of Kruifontein. There's a long road that runs from Kruifontein all the way to Balbo. And there I was, I, I discharged myself walking. And, she, and, she, and somebody had told her that, we must come to Pastor Louis. Because I remember I applied for a job and I was supposed to start at the job the Monday. And this happened the Friday. And the Sunday, they loaded me in the car and I had gauze over me. It's never, I still had the same gauze that they gave me, the emergency, the burn shield over me. And the blood was coming out on the side. Pastor Tony, they were helping me in the back there and they laid me down. And I was very scared of Pastor Louis. <laughs> I was very scared because 
I didn't know when I was laying there, I didn't want him to come to me. The whole service, I was just laying, I said, don't come to me, don't come to me. <laughs> and I remember when he came to me, he said, get up. And I said, I can't get up. And he said, get up and walk. And I could feel the moment when he touched me, I could feel the power of God come into me. And I got up. And I walked to the front, and I walked to the back, and I walked to the front, and, we, and everybody was just giving God praise for my healing. Even though the doctor said, you know, that I'll never be able, my hands will be like this because of the burns. Never wear a short sleeve sweater. I'll never be able because of the burns and the insides that was burnt here. We choose not to, to accept that. We choose to accept God's report. And that's what I chose. I chose to accept the report of the Holy Spirit. And today, there's nothing wrong with my hands. There's nothing wrong with my body. Me and Pastor, he always look at me. I go, okay, take my sweat off when I'm by the beach. <laughs> Amen. So, let's just give God praise in this place. Amen. Amen. Yeah, at a, young, at a young age, 12, 13, I knew that I was going to pray for people. I was waiting on the Lord because I became a hero in sport, having my own group called the Dead Devils. <laughs> the Dead Devil for the Lord, thank you, Jesus. I had no fear in me, no fear. Am I? But I knew one day God is going to touch me. And I had my sports car, Ford Capri, sports car, black one. Oh man, I tell you, you don't miss with the best, the best don't miss. I remember driving and, oh, this girl was going overseas, we gave a pool party and I, we took her home, this model. And uh, I was driving and I just heard, like a window breaking. And the guy came with the motorbike with his lights off was so drunk, they, they, he was at the party, they told him to go and he came down the main road and I'm going up, he's coming down, almost like head on the side, my windscreen ripped off his arm and the little bone went in here, but you know, of my reflex and my foot just go, move it back, I tell you, something you'll never forget, that hand can fly into the car, knock that girl, that beautiful girl, like a mark here. Never saw again. Saw after more than two years. She came to me and said, Hello, Pastor Louis. I said, Pastor Louis. She heard, You know, God changed me in that operating table while I was laying. I was afraid to die as they were working on my eye. Because I grew up in a spiritual home. I received the Lord in my life at the age of 12, 13, and I knew my calling. And I said, Lord, I'm going to walk in my calling. I'm going to walk in my calling. I'm waiting upon you. <laughs> so I fear to die. But I tell you, when I came out of there, God started working with me that day. That was my knock for my miracle. That was my knock for my miracle. And then it started working. Wait, well, Cindy, can you wake your way to the front? And you know, one of the first real miracles that, you know, this guy in parliament asked me to pray in Makassar. Because Makassar is a heavy place for drugs and stuff and things, you know. Lord used me to heal. His wife is here. The Lord used me to heal her husband of the skin disease for 25 years. He could never wear, you know, he always used to wear a helmet and gloves because of his skin just peeling off. And as I prayed for her, I said, the Lord said, I must pray for you three times. And everything stopped. Mother-in-law never saw him without the helmet. And now last week, they get a child that came that was busy dying. And they said to me two weeks ago, I must come to the hospital uh, and pray over the child because they're going to put the machines off. Holding a heart, all these things. The grandma's here. And uh, I said, no, you come to church. You come to church. I pray for you. You stand for your child. And the, and the husband received the Lord in his life of the child and, and, the, and they're not married but she said she's a child of God you know and I prayed for them I said go back when they go back they said they don't understand but there's a miracle that took place we serve a miracle working God life and death is in the power of the tongue amen, amen. and she just told me this morning the child is alive and everything 
But it's amazing, the mother could see, the mother-in-law could see the life in this child's eyes. This child cannot die. You see, that's why I say like the eagle. He's got two visions. We got two visions. One child was blind. When you were blind, you had a different vision. But now when God opened your spiritual eye, you got spiritual vision. Because faith is a language. You know, when I was in Makassar with that campaign, she was sitting in a wheelchair with her hands like this. Paralyzed. She said, Pastor, as I'm not my kids and Jesus, can I be? Is that what you said? What were you suffering from? Um, hello, I'm a family. You know, I'm so flown away now. I'm standing here, but something just came over me now. <laughs> but yeah, I'd like to greet you in the awesome name, our Lord, our Savior. Um, like, like you said, you know, sometimes we just accept some things that the doctor speaks over us and I was diagnosed with Gillian Baray in 2009. And um, Gillian Baray is something that um, it, it, it attacks your, 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 your um, nerves and muscles and stuff like that and, and if it, go, it can go further to, to um, attack your brain and stuff and you get memory losses and stuff like that. And I was in a hospital, um, diagnosed with Guillain Barre, and um, I couldn't breathe on my own. I couldn't speak, my lungs collapsed. I got lamed, you know. I used to be a chef. I used to be attended on the gambling slots. I, uh, yeah, I was a girl with many talents. <laughs> you know, uh, I never had a time. Um, there was time that God showed me the gift that He placed in my life, and I said, "No, I don't want that." You know, sometimes um, God—not sometimes, it is—that God chose us and not us choosing God. And you know, He laid upon, He came into my life, He allowed these things. But you know, yo, um, I was put in a wall as well when He was speaking. Yo, just took me back to memories. I was also placed in a war where people was dying around me uh, for weeks, to months. And um, then they, put, they, they took me out. They said, no, this girl must be alone because her body can't, cannot take any germs. So nobody can come to me. Everybody must be cleaned and washed and everything. And I had my separate room, my separate nurses. I was totally alone. You know, and one thing the doctor always said, there was this German doctor, she didn't believe in God. Yeah. And um, she said to me that um, this is what is going to happen. You won't be able to speak ever again. Yes, when you will speak, it won't be noble. Don't even think about it because I, I hear that you love singing. Don't even think about singing because whenever I would try to sing, it would bleed. You know what? I was singing also. In the beginning in the church, in front of everything, and God just allowed me to sing. And today I can really say, you know, I'm so pleased to be with the house of the Lord today. You know, being here, Pastor the Lord, Pastor Patty, God took us through a trial, and today I can truly say, I'm standing here, I can walk, I can speak to the man. Oh, Amen. God touched me. Pastor Louis came on, you know, I'm just feeling trembling inside of me, I'm feeling butterflies. Oh. The spirit is just working on I, I can't even speak now, you know. And it's like my words doesn't want to come out and I'm just going to go into it. Yes, the doctor said, not actually the doctors, but the professors. They spoke a lot of things over my life. They told me, I won't be able to speak again, I won't be able to sing again. My hands is like this. And I couldn't, I won't be able to be normal like using my hands. And then I won't be, I had two children and I had two boys before giving the right. And then they told me, you won't be have, you can't, you won't be able to have children anymore. But when I stepped into revival ministries, Pastor took me to memory lane and Pastor so told uh, the church that um, they used to come to Macassar. Oh, my grandma said, hey, Come, as a pastor, but come for that. Pastor Louis, 
would come and he put him in the sword, you know? <laughs> and when we came there, I was in a wheelchair. When I ended that folding, I said to myself, Lord, <coughs> just make me, just touch me today, of course. You know, um, I, I'm a bit, I used to be very, what can I say, me? Even him, he can just say, this is not to be, like I said, you just want to be them to be neat. I was like that. And for me, I never actually asked anybody anything. I worked hard for to achieve where I was. That's why I think God actually put me through that process. Asking somebody to help me, I never did that. And we're going through that process, being on, just being lame for three years, it was a process for me. Seeing these things and I became humble. I became, I didn't have patience. No, I didn't have patience, but being a patient myself for three years, I learned to be patient, I learned to be humble, and I learned to be respectful to other people. So yeah, I'm just blessed being in the house of group. I never knew it for so long. <laughs> wow, it feels like yesterday. But nobody, nobody knows truly the plan of God. Make that time and that space to, 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 to allow God to move through your life. If He moves through your life, He will move in your house, He you will move through your family, and He you will move to your community. Amen. Amen. You know, um, I remember praying for in a wheelchair. And she fell over the wheelchair. And oh, she said, Yeah, I the risk is for me to do. I said, God is busy with the operation there next to the wheelchair leaving. And then I went there and I picked up. And she started moving. I, I don't know what I did that day. The wall from the one side to the other, there was three rows, rows behind us. Now I'm praying already for two and a half hours. Now I'm check I'm finished. But they can hear it. They make it clear. But it's everybody's phoning. Hey, here's a man, Veronica Flama, say, look now. Cindy. <laughs> I always make sure with the girl from my Kaspar from Hard Bay. Hard Bay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I said HIV and I prayed for the Lord Jesus. Hey, Amen. I was at Christian Center that time and he said, please, you must come with us. We'll take you around to, to the different churches and oversee. I said, let me pray about it. And the Lord said, no, I'm going to lead you. And I thank God today that I was obedient. Amen. You know what? You know, after that, how many children did you have after that? I had two more. I had two more, two more. And whenever I was pregnant, not my room was always full. I'm tired about they come to see and then they were studying this disease. How can this be? A girl is walking, she's this and that. You know, I was just, even now if I still go to Tiger Bird, you know, they are just stand by us. And I said to you, guys must come to Pastor Louis here in Audrey, must come. That's where I found my lead. Even the specialists, even the doctors, the, the, the German uh, doctor also, she was also always when she see me, she just said, that she had no words to say. Amen. Amen. Yeah, that's why I want to say, you know, there is no secret that the Lord cannot do. There is no secret. I remember we were playing one day. I never asked him. It's the first time now. And he came after church. I said, yeah, he was still coming on fire. I said, hey, why only now? You're late. The church is out. He said, I was at the camp of the school. And like that monkey box around. His wife had him brought him in. But you could see the, you know, the just the pus and the stuff like that. The whole is just bursting. And I said to him, what? I took away. The lady with the legs, with the holes, I took away. She said, the doctor take gloves. I took my hands. Yeah. When my, mom, my wife said about the home, or the two patients at my house, I would see blood turn up. I don't take a cloth, I take my hands. 
the anointing of the hands will take out every germ. You take the cloth of the words to wipe it to dry it, but it's in your hand. What's inside and out of your belly shall flow rivers and streams of living waters. If you fill you with the word, that word that flow out of you is for signs and wonders. That word that you release is sharper than a two-edged sword. Greater things will you do because I'm going to the Father. When Jesus went to the dead, when he got baptized, he was full with the Spirit. But when he came out of the desert, he came out with the power. We can't remain just with that anointing. It's the anointing and the power that's available. No dying to self, no life of God. And you know, as I prayed for my brother that day, I took the oil on him. What happened, brother? Is it all? What happened? I got off in church. When Dr. V prayed for me, I went home and um, and I was so drenched with the anointing uh, of the pastor prayed for me and um, it just started feeling so different. You know, my tired neck was, was covered and the next day um, I went well, I was I was actually supposed to go to Grootersky. I went there and they wanted to book me in. Sure. And um, it was over the weekend and I said, and I was sitting there and I was thinking, oh, must I really not do this? Because knowing that the doctors aren't going to come and work over the weekend. They will only see to me on Monday. Yeah. Um, and I was sitting there and the next minute I just said, you know what, I'm, I'm leaving now. Um, I actually made a mistake to come here because I believe that my God is great and He's yes. great. Amen. And um, I went home and I spoke to my wife and I told her, you know what, uh, we're going to trust God for this. And, you know, I was sitting with a lot of pain and this uh, discomfort and um, she was praying and she was trusting God. And every day it just got better and better since Dr. Louis prayed for me until the point where it was completely gone. Um, the doctor still couldn't explain. When they did check me out, they couldn't explain what it was or what had happened and even how it left. Um, and also applying the oil Amen. on it. Amen. 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 Now Terry said to me, Pastor Louis, when we came at home, everything had burst and dried up. I said, Amen. It's all about faith. I know there's a lot of people here for healing today. I'm not going to pray for the healing. There's somebody with a baby. I will put my hands on that baby. And the baby will be healed. Amen. 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 We're having lunch today. Amen. 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 We're going to, we were feeding the spirit, but we're going to feed the flesh now. Woo! You are what you eat. Amen. 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 So we're going to trust the Lord. You may be this afternoon here standing in for your neighbor, your friend, your wife, your husband. Just have faith what you heard. This is what this ministry is all about. This is what the ministry of birth. What God told me at the age of 12, 13. What I was going to do even to become, when I became, you know, the leader of the dead devils doing stunts and circus, extravaganza shows, you know, international circuses and things. And, and I could do with very few people in the world could do. You know I should do it. And, uh, but I knew my deepest calling was healing and deliverance. My passion was there more than anything. Yes, I was also a soccer player, top goal scorer always, of my speed and my what I had. But my heart was on healing and deliverance. But I had to realize that to die to self for the gift to manifest, for the gift to birth. And for the, your gift to burn, you've got to die to self. Amen. You see, as a child, when I grew up, in, in, you know, like um, the four minks, I used to go with Mrs. Bayer there, and I could see when that woman get together, the, the warriors, the prayer warriors, and then I'll go to Belfort, you know, to the Conradis, Mr. Conradi and Mrs. Conradi, and I will see how they connected. 
And as a boy, I could receive that because I knew that calling was inside of me. It was in the center of my heart. And since I knew this time it's going to burn, but God had to give me a knock. He had to give me that knock to awaken the Spirit of the Lord. Don't wait for the knock. It might be too late. And I realize that many are called and few are chosen. You can be sitting there and be the chosen one. And that's why God used men of God to touch you for the calling to come to the service. He used men and God. He used men and women to touch you. Some will give you one word and you can be set free. One wrong decision can wreck your life forever. But one word can set you free. I can say to that lady, take your baby home, your baby's healed, that baby will be healed. It's what I feed myself with, can I have amen? Oh. What you feed yourself with will carry the power you release. The anointing of God will go with it. Because what you're mindful of becomes the strength that you're walking. Amen? Amen. I know there's so many other powerful testimonies, but Alice also was COVID busy dying and you know, but just for time, but Amen? Amen. Amen. We're going to trust the Lord. Amen. 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 We're just going to trust the Lord. There's no secret that the Lord cannot do. I know some of you came from my casa to there with, for me to pray for children, but yes. But yes, I want to lay my hands on the child and it will be there. Amen? Amen. So we're going to trust the Lord. Can we just stand? <coughs> Amen. Amen. I'm going to ask Andy to come and close and also, yeah. Father God, we just thank you, Lord, yes, Lord. for this day, Lord. This is the day that you have made, Lord. Our church has turned 21 years, Lord, yes. and we give all the thanks to you, Father. Yes, Father God, I thank you for your leaders, Pastor Patty and Pastor Louis. Lord, I pray, Lord, as, as the years that lie ahead, Lord, that this church is going to be too small. Yes, Lord. I said it before and I said it now again. It's going to be too small. But I thank you, Father, Lord, who you are, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You make everything possible. Yes, Lord. May we doubt you make things move, move in our way, Lord, yes. in the church and through the church. I pray, Lord, as we celebrate today, Lord, the spending one years, Lord, and as the food is going to be served, Lord, that you will bless the food, Lord. Bless it to our bodies. Give us strength, Lord, to carry on with your work, Lord. Father, I pray, Lord, that you will just bless everyone, Lord, as we leave this place today, Lord. Yes, Lord. And you will go before us, Lord. Please, yes, Lord. And strengthen every cook and path, Lord. Yes, Lord. That we will go in the highways and the byways yes. to proclaim the good news. Yes, Lord. Proclaim your name. Because your name is higher than any other name. Yes. You are bigger than every every disease, every yes. every sickness. Lord. Amen. You are yes. bigger, Lord. Amen. Father, I thank you, I praise you, I give you glory, Father. I pray, Lord, that you will be our real God. Yes. You will go before us, Lord. Yes. And straighten every crooked path. In Jesus' mighty name. Lord, bless us stay further, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. amen. So my life, my life will never ever, will never, ever be, the be the same again. I believe it. I believe it. And I receive it. I receive it. Father, because they are the righteous, they got the right to claim their healing, their yes. deliverance this afternoon. Heal them from cancer. 
every incurable disease father I pray for a blood situation right now for the blood flow in the name of Jesus every migraine Lord that will go in the name of Jesus tumors I command you to live in the name of Jesus I uproot you I uproot your works in the name of Jesus and every pain right now will go your blood will never lose it will never lose its power in the name of Jesus father bring alignment to the mind spirit soul and body in the name of Jesus let the later years be better let the later years be better than the former years in the name of Jesus oh. Ulcers will leave now in the name of Jesus. It will be flushed out in Jesus. Alignment for the stomach, Father, is their strength. Oh, I uproot it now, now. Faith is now, your miracle is now. Behold, I will do a new thing now. It shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? Father, they will know it because of their faith. Because of faith became their lifestyle. Because they are the righteous. They got the right to claim the healing this afternoon. Whatever it is, they can claim it now. Jobs and more jobs. Increase upon increase. Contract upon contract. In Jesus' name. You'll be the head and not the tail. I pray for alignment and position this afternoon. In Jesus' name. Align your people, Father. Position your people this afternoon to excel. Father, bring their face before somebody that need them in Jesus' name. Their face, the face of the those that look to Jesus. Their face, your faces, their faces will not be covered with shame because they look to Jesus. Lord, even if the storm come on God, then you will wait. Those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. I pray God. They wait for that storm, but they're gonna ride it winds above the storm. The wind is the Holy Spirit this afternoon. Receive the Holy Spirit, and you shall receive power in Jesus' name. You shall receive power. You shall receive power. Has God made you this afternoon? We thank you, Lord. You are a miracle working God in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, see yourself out of your situation. God will take you out. What you see is what you get. See yourself being set free. See yourself things will come to you. When you look to the Holy Ghost, it will come to you. It will come to you. It will come to you. Because he's the Alpha. He's the Omega. He's the beginning.